We've got you covered all season long. Welcome to the BCSN Nation podcast. Here it is. Welcome to season two, episode 21 of the BCSN Nation podcast presented to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Let's go sports bar. I am your host, Brandon Carnes. To my left, we have the ever-present, you know him, you love him, Coach Mike Robb. And to my right, returning from his brief hiatus, he's a very, very busy man, is our own Justin Feldkamp. Welcome back. Hope Mason kept that seat nice and warm he for you. He did. It feels good. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know at home, we are celebrating our Emerald anniversary. They're all throughout 2024 here at BCSN. That's right. 20 years of BCSN content coming right to you guys in honor of that. We're going to start the show off talking about your favorite BCSN memory for you guys over the last 20 years, whether that's a game you were at, a game you got to call, a memory of a story you got to do. Mike Rob, like I said, we reward good attendance. So you get to go first today. Well, thank you very much. Um, But, you know, one thing uh, that I remember the most is actually just my first interview on BCSN, you know, uh, as a head coach. You know, that was just one of the coolest moments, uh, just watching BCSN after the uh, games are over. And then knowing that, hey, I'm about to be on here uh, talking. And then uh, on top of that, it's it's just the beautiful thing that BCSN offers so much uh, for the high school athletes and the local athletes as well, you know, for them to be able to go back and look at this, uh, you know, catalog of all their games, their uncles, their cousins and sisters. Um, I don't I can't tell you how many requests I get from people asking me for DVDs. Like, hey, you got this DVD of my game? I'm like, no, I don't. But go to the website. But it's cool because um, we're collecting memories, and this is just solid for uh, everybody in this community. Like, if BCSN was in any other city, they'd be grateful. But I'm glad it's here in Toledo. Yeah, hey, we're, uh, we're grateful, I think. Yeah, 100%. And I, I couldn't really do just one, uh, just some of the things off the top of my head that I wrote down. Mud Hens opening days, it's a celebration of the city. So much fun. People downtown, baseball's there. State championship games, regardless of sport, football, basketball, baseball, Golf, tennis, volleyball, soccer, uh, over the course of 20 years, we've had state champions in each and every one of those categories. Uh, Walleye Kelly Cup finals in the last few years, the Italian Bowl, a uh, first of its kind experience and atmosphere at the Glass Bowl this past July in 2023. Uh, the tailgate show that I'm fortunate enough and privileged and honored to be able to host uh, each and every Friday night during the high school football season, then Game Day Nation with what Mike Robb and the boys do. And, you know, you might see the three faces on TV, but that is a total team effort with Absolutely. everybody pulling one rope in one direction from producers and reporters and anchors and social media people, uh, editors, and you name it, uh, score tickers, inputters, all that kind of stuff. It is uh, definitely a team effort that we're really proud to do. I would say, personally, my favorite memory is I think the first game I ever got to do play-by-play on was a Mommy Bay Classic and I got to call that with my co-anchor there was Josh Adams, who was actually my high school wrestling coach. So that was a really cool moment for me. But coming up on today's show, we've got our Sean's Irish Tavern Player of the Week. We've got some great shakeups atop the taction. Uh, we've got history being made out in White House with the Anthony Wayne Generals. We've got our RBA Clip of the Week, our Game of the Week preview, and so much more. Make sure you watch new episodes of the BCSN Nation podcast at 4 p.m. right here on BCSN or you can catch us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or head yourself over to bcsnnation.com slash podcast for new episodes. And make sure you follow us everywhere on social media. Don't miss a drop of our content. That's at BCSN Sports across platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, YouTube. We are everywhere. Don't forget TikTok. We will start today's shows off with a, a recap of what was our game of the week last week. And I mentioned it before. A real shakeup atop the tax standings. We had Toledo Christian on the road at Emmanuel Christian. We talked about it last week. Being a close game, it was just that. It did not let us down. 73-68, the final score of that matchup. And the Eagles really powered by a great game from Kanye Gast and 24 points from him. What did you see that really helped the Eagles last week there, Justin? Well, I liked how we got a three-horse race right now as opposed to a two-horse race. I think through the first month and a half or so, people thought it was just clear-cut, going to be Emmanuel Christian, maybe straight up, and then Emmanuel Christian, maybe Maumee Valley Country Day as well. But TC said they were in a must-win situation, and they delivered. And these two teams are not only legit in the TAC, legit in Northwest Ohio, they're legit in the state of Ohio, Emmanuel Christian, number five in the state in Division Three, Toledo Christian, with that win, now up to 
fourth in the state in Division Four. And then the other element that I want to bring in and throughout the rest of the, the basketball season is the RPI. Max Preps taking over the RPI at the OHSA state level this year, and both of these teams are number one in their particular district, Division Four and Division Three. So these are legit teams who are going to be ever-present, not only throughout the rest of the regular season, but theoretically on some deeper playoff runs. But you just like what you saw out of Gaston, what you mentioned, Kester, uh, the, the balanced scoring attack across the board, I think, is tremendously beneficial for Toledo Christian. Uh, Kalan Butler, Carter Kester, Kanye Gaston, and Xander Hessen, they, they kind of do all of it. It's not just one of them doing all the scoring and then one of them doing all the assisting or all the rebounding. All of them are four well-rounded players. When you talk about balanced scoring, that was really TC's, you know, their key to victory. And the problem maybe for Emmanuel is all the points came from two guys. We talked about Nate Miles and his success. We know what he's going to do. 25 points for him. Jalen Brown dropped a 30 bomb. But you count those points up, Mike Rob. That's 55 of 68 team points. That means everybody else on the roster put up 13. That's, that's a problem. Well, you know, this is just what they've been doing. You know, I don't necessarily know that it's a problem. It's just a style of ball that Toledo Christian play. And also, Mason made a great point about it last week. They got good coaching. You know, um, and not saying that Sed isn't a great coach. He's a young coach. He's still learning, starting to get his experience. And I think that's the difference there was you had a coach that went out there and knew exactly how to stop two top players. Remember, last year they beat Jerry Easter, you know, when they had him. So, you know, this is a team that is not afraid of playing top talent. And they play team ball, and that's exactly what happened, and they got the big victory. Brown had a lot of points, but they shut down Nate. They didn't let him do what he wanted to do as much as he wanted and, uh, and and they freshmen, you know, they got they got the talent. They'll be okay, but Toledo Christian, they're a real deal. They're coached up well. Yeah, Coach Tyler Boris does a great job, and I think that the, another benefit of this, this was a big game feel. In the post-game interviews, they said that they hadn't played in an environment like this. And Emmanuel Christian is in an enormous gym or school, but at the same time, when you got the big-time playmakers, we got some Division One recruits on the floor in this game. And both sides came to play. It was a close game, uh, a legit game of the week for us at BCSN. And you, you mentioned Jerry Easter. His La Lumiere team out of Indiana is coming this Saturday to play Maumee Valley Country Day. That game's going to be at Toledo Christian, a bigger gym for an expected bigger crowd. So those fans of Jerry Easter are going to be able to see him back in the 419 this coming Saturday night against Maumee Valley Country Day. And we love a natural plug. Beautiful. So like I said, there's attrition atop the tack, right? We've got each of those top three teams have beaten each other. Maumee Valley beating Toledo Christian, Toledo Christian. Now they've beat Emmanuel, but Emmanuel, they beat Maumee Valley. So we've got a real big shakeup at the top. We'd love to see how those things are going to match up as the season continues to go on. We've got a theme of greatness going on today. We've got a great league run up. But we've also got really great players in Northwest Ohio. And we're going to get into our Sean's Irish Tavern Player of the Week right now. All right, this week's Sean's Irish Tavern Player of the Week takes a short trip from Rogers just up the road to St. John's Jesuit. Joseph Taylor is our Saint, is our Player of the Week this week. Excuse me. 27 points for St. John's in their win over St. Francis. That's a season sweep for the Knights or for the Titans over the Knights. Excuse me while I remember how to talk. <laughs> Jalen Murphy, like I said, Jalen Murphy had four points. So they really needed Joseph Taylor to step up in this matchup, and he did so in a big way. Yeah, he had, I think, 13 points at halftime, and he said that they had to play with urgency the first time around. St. Francis got out to a fast start against St. John. So you live and learn. That's what sports is all about. You gotta take film, game film, and experiences from previous matchups, either whether it's against the same opponent or, or previous opponents. They changed it and flipped the script, and I like some of the post-game comments that uh, Joseph Taylor was talking about. You could tell it was, it was <laughs> coach speak and, and good lessons from the coach and locker room conversations. He said, opportunity met preparation, and that reminded me of a quote that I love to use with all the teams that I coach. The will to win is not nearly as important as the will to prepare to win. And that type of game preparation, and uh, whether that's physical and or mental, they laid it all out there at Savage Arena and, and Joseph Taylor, you know, a star on the track, going to Duke for track and field uh, next year. But he, he's been dynamo on the basketball court this season. Yeah, and they absolutely needed him, too. You know, when your star player goes cold and he can't get going, how can you continue to battle through? You know, in uh, St. John's, you know, this is a team that 
was an underdog going into the playoffs last year because people didn't trust this team, didn't believe in them. You know, they have great coaching, but they also got the top talent. And then Joseph Taylor, if he continued to play the way that he does, this St. John's team is going to be a problem. Oh, yeah, I mean, they are growing. And you got to you love when your guy, right, and Jalen Murphy isn't having a night and you can have someone like Joseph Taylor step up, carry the load for you guys. He talked about it in post game about wanting to help carry that burden for Murphy, for Race Kowalczyk. And uh, in case you didn't notice, he had a crazy block in the first quarter that it's in the running for our play of the week. So we have to make sure you stay here and check that out. In the meantime, we have a historic season going on over in White House. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. Last week, we had Anthony Wayne girls at Finley. They got the big win, 55-37. They stay unbeaten in the Buckeye. We've we talked about how touted this Anthony Wayne girls team is. They beat Clay on Monday, 80-21. to But more importantly, I think, for this matchup is some of the stats that came out of it afterwards. There are all kinds of records being set, being broken by these Anthony Wayne girls. Brooke Bender, she set the career three-point record. Uh, you had Sophie Smith set a single-game assist record in that game. Elise Bender, career point record. She's got a career free-throw leader as well since then. And the crazy part of all this, guys, is they're all juniors. All three of those girls I just mentioned that are setting all these records are juniors. They're set up for... Not just a crazy run this year, but even more so afterwards, Mike. Yeah, and you know, you just talked about all these girls that are young, and then you still got the twins that's coming up, the Brenneman twins that's coming up as well. Yeah, and, yeah and, you have Leah and Mal Pike. Yeah, and it's it's so much talent, you know, brewing in there. And when what you're starting to see too is uh, you know, kids staying home, you know, and, and that's what's happening a lot in, in the past, you'll see those girls ending up at St. Ursula or Notre Dame, and they're all just standing back here because they know that they got something in their own community that they can build and thrive off of. So, you know, as they continue to grow, they got a great coaching staff and they got great players. And, and again, this is a state championship caliber team. So, I, I mean, I don't know that anybody can really uh, beat them but themselves. Yeah, they've done a great job with Coach Jamie Carter at the helm. And all of those stats that you bring up, Brandon, point to – a program, not a yeah. one-year hit wonder type of deal, or let's capitalize on a star player who's staying with our program, going to play four years of varsity. This is, okay, here's the next person who graduated. Here's the next sophomore sensation coming up. Here's the group of them. You bring up the, the twins. There was a great uh, Toledo Blade article this past Sunday. Hats off to Kyle Rowland doing a good job with all the different twins, sets of twins that are throughout the varsity program and even some more at the junior high level that will eventually uh, don the blue and white for Anthony Wayne. But, yeah, hats off to Jamie Carter. And, and you know, it's it's difficult to win in the postseason. It's just a 32-minute battle, and you can be off and your star player can miss some shots or you miss a free throw late or you have too many turnovers or something unaccustomed happens, but uh, they're going to be primed because of that balance and that experience of having all of those players who have been through the ropes, gone to a state Final Four a couple years ago, gone on district or regional tournament runs. All of that pays off. You keep it in your memory bank. Hey, I've been there, done that. Maybe you're not as nervous when you're taking a free Mm -hmm. throw late in the fourth quarter. But yeah, all, all of that pays dividends on down the line, and Anthony Wayne is set for a good season. Yeah, you see this season. with like a championship caliber team, Mike. You mentioned it that the regular season is is really for them. It's their preseason. They're not playing to win an NLL title. They're not playing to beat Clay on a Monday night. They're playing for March. They're playing to make another deep playoff run. And again, like I mentioned, it's it's just crazy to me that all of these these girls that set records all this last week, and then you have the Pikes that are all juniors and younger. Like you mentioned, this isn't just a one year flash in the pan. This is a program that's they're going to be a problem for Northwest Ohio for a couple years to come. And my favorite part about that Twins article was them talking about sometimes we get mixed up on the court and it's to our advantage. They don't know which twin is which. So it's a huge advantage for them. Make sure you check jersey numbers when you are guarding all those Anthony (laughs) Wayne generals. And now it's time for our Clip of the Week brought to you by Renewal by Anderson. All right, we will move from White House over to Sylvania for our clip of the week, but it's the visiting team in Sylvania. Whitmer able to stave off a large lead that Southview had for most of the game. And this is a play, I think, that was kind of the catalyst for the momentum turn. You see the steal on the sideline, and then Makai Leach just takes a couple steps, goes up, throws one down. I mentioned to you the lead that Southview had. They were up 19, as much as 19 at one point during this game. And this steal, you see the good pressure on the sideline by Davis, a little bounce pass, and 
I was impressed with Makai Leach. He didn't get a running start for that. That's a one step and go. That's just athleticism. Yeah, that's pure bounce right there. And, and great defense right there as well, you know, setting it up, you know, getting the steal and then being able to hit the nice pass over there down in the middle to Makai Leach, who stayed with the play and trailed it all the way through. You know, and a, a dunk in high school is equivalent to just stealing momentum. You know, uh, you get everybody on their seats. You see everybody in the stands over there. Look at them jumping head top. Now, once the energy takes over in the gym, now it starts going. So this was a key pivotal moment here for Whitmer and way to battle back because to bounce back from a, a 15 point deficit and come back and get a win on the road. That just shows you the discipline and the poise that the team has. Yeah, you mentioned the point differential at one point. It was 27 to 8. Southview had the lead and I was texting of. <laughs> Jim Mazies, his son Will, there on the court, quarterback for the Southview football team as well. And I said, woulda, coulda, shoulda for Southview against Whitmer, not only in this game, yeah. but also on the football field. Nice. That was a fourth quarter game at Mel Nussbaum Stadium back towards the end of the season last year. Uh, so, yeah, you, when you have these matchups of the Cardinal Division team going against a Buckeye Division team, so small school versus big school, and these are opportunities for Southview. And, you know, we're, we're talking RPI, not just at the college level, but at the high school level now. But those are opportunities for those smaller schools to get big-time points because that opponent's winning percentage plays a factor in that formula. And we know Whitmer has just one loss to Finley, and Finley's undefeated. So all kinds yeah, of percentage points <laughs> are going to be uh, uh, at the grabbing there for Southview, and they just came up short. But, yeah, um, I mean, Whitmer outscoring them 48-25 to 25 in the second half. I mean, 48 points in the second half. Most teams, whether they're high school or college, are going to score more points in the second half. You get into the flow of the game. But at the same time, 48, you multiply that by two, you're almost – getting up to 100. So, uh, yeah, hats off to, to Whitmer. They utilized their skills, and they utilized what they were good at, the, the pressure defense, yes. the athleticism, and that's textbook there. I appreciate, you know, what do you tell your, your defender? You try to get to that sideline. Don't allow the ball uh, to get around right. the sideline. Use, side that, line use that sideline as the next the defender, defender, right? And that's, that's kind of what they did, and then group in the double team there. Because when you have, look at the length. I mean, Makai Leach, look at the length on him, mm. just whether it's blocking a ball out of bounds or guarding a guy. I mean, it's just so so beneficial on the basketball court. And it came on a night where they, I mean, they really needed Makai Leach. Antoine West maybe wasn't on his A game or maybe just was playing distributor a little bit. The points weren't coming from him. Leach had 25 on the night. 62 to 54, the final score. You mentioned it, 27 to 8 at one point. So a huge comeback. This, again, our RBA clip of the week, a momentum shifter for the Panthers in their big win over Southview last Friday. Well, big comeback win, we'll call it that. To see more highlight clips just like this one, make sure you are following us on TikTok. That's at BCSN Sports. We are inching ever closer to 10,000 followers. So we want you to be one of the 10,000, all right? Come join us. Come hang out. See daily clips just like that great one. Speaking of great things, we've got great things happening all over, and we've got a great student section for our student section of the week this week. We are rolling out to the canyon. Napoleon Wildcats, you are our winners of our Unison Student Section of the Week. That's Unison Health. They are a proud sponsor of high school athletics right here on BCSN. So that chain will be making its way out to you. Nicole Weaving will head out to the canyon. You guys' matchup with Clay this weekend. Come photo ready. Get your jerseys on. Whatever it is you guys are doing for your night, make sure it's a banger because we are bringing you that chain, so don't let us down. And... Speaking of great things, right? That's our theme of the day. Like I said at the beginning of the show, we're mentioning 20 years of greatness here on BCSN. And that includes spotlighting 40 of our greatest athletes in the BCSN era on the male and female side, 20 of each. So we will start our first one. And this one's going to be special to you. You were out there last week talking to her. Is Kate Ochter a great in Northwest Ohio? A clay eagle. She was a four-year letter winner in basketball, golf, track and field three times. Three times a league player of the year in basketball. That's all before she went to BG. BG held, B, helped BG, excuse me, to four MAC regular season titles, three MAC tournament crowns, four national postseason appearances. She left fifth in BG's SU history in scoring, all time leader in assists with 688 of those. MAC player of the year as a senior. And that's all now. She's a head coach at Detroit Mercy. You got to head up to Detroit last yeah. week, Justin, to talk to her. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so that picture that you're seeing right now, I texted that to her, and she said, oh, look at all the baby face ballers in that picture. I thought it was a great <laughs> way to recap that. You see B.J. Raymond on there, Brian Roberts, uh, you know, some greats from Xavier and Dayton, and Roberts went on to play in the NBA. He's also one of our 40 athletes that we will 
uh, feature in the next 40 weeks here at BCSN. A big project undertaking for us and everyone here at BCSN, and it was great to, to catch up. Basically, we're going to do where are they now type of thing. Yep. So some players are still active as players and or coaches. Uh, we had three who are current high schoolers, so they got their careers still ahead of them. Some have since retired. Uh, but yeah, talking about Kate Octor, uh, you laid out all the accolades there. She was terrific at Clay, terrific at BGSU, and terrific at a variety of coaching staff. She was an assistant at BG, an assistant at Xavier University, assistant at St. Bonaventure, took the head coaching job at Loyola Chicago a couple years ago. I went up to interview her at that campus, and then she departed there and is now at Detroit Mercy, and she's had some rebuilding efforts at both Loyola and Detroit, and she's done a great job at both of those locations. She just wants to build a winner and build and build and build something that she did at all of her stops. And I, I liked how she takes a little bit, a piece of all the different coaches that she's had since she was in youth and high school and college and uses all of those to become the head coach and that she is. And I, I tell you what, there, there's very, very small number of people who would say anything badly about what Kate Doctor has been able to do on the court as a player and or as a coach. And I, I do know that Detroit Mercy is proud to have her, knows what type of gem they have for her as a head coach. But yeah, she she earned every bit of the spotlight that we're shining on as one of the top 20 female athletes of the BCSN era. And you know, she talks a lot about in the story you did with her about those baby face ballers and how many talented athletes there were in the area at the time and how that really helped mold her and her love of competition and wanting to win and that's something you're going to see in all of these athletes. We're not going to spotlight somebody who didn't have that that drive to compete against somebody good. Mike, what is what does that mean for you? Obviously, you coach a lot of youth athletes when they have that drive to just I want to go against the best because I want to be the best. Yeah, you know, and you see that through a lot of different people. And, and Kate Octor, obviously, you know, you, she played so many different sports and she just wanted to compete. You know, and that's just what it's about. You know, I hope one day my daughter is like like Kate, you know, want to compete in every single sport and uh, and and take it to the next level. You know, um, she's a definitely a great role model. But it's, it's, as in coaching athletes, you know, I'll, I'll mention one person just off topic, like Mike Warren. <laughs> Anytime he found an opportunity to compete against somebody, he did. It was like, hey, you think you're a good linebacker? Okay, cover me. Hey, you think you're this? Oh, come, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll meet, guard meet you. Meet me in the hole. Let's go. You, yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, you find guys that want to compete or girls or whatever it may be. Those are the people that that elevate your program and elevate where you're at. And Kate, she is the example of that by exactly what she did in all three stops. Yeah, I don't think we could start at much better. Somebody with a list of accolades that, as you heard me, I'm running <laughs> out of breath trying to say them all. So we'll go from one of our BCSN era all-time greats to just straight up a great matchup this week is our Dunn Chevy in Oregon Game of the Week preview. All right, we're going to stay in the NLL Buckeye. We talked about Whitmer and stuff earlier. We're staying there because our Game of the Week preview is going to be down at the Hive at Perrysburg. The number three Finley Trojans come into Perrysburg. It's going to be at 730 on the NLL Network this Friday. Finley 12-0, 3-0 in the Buckeye. Number three in the D1 polls, like I mentioned. There are some crazy stats that I'm going to throw at you guys about these two teams coming into these games. All right, Perrysburg defensively, they are giving up 39 points per game. That's it, 39 points per game is to me wild and then you have Harrisburg they're 10 and 3 on the season they got a win over Liberty Center last night the the staggering difference in their two stats here for me is in wins almost 72 points a game for the Yellow Jackets in their losses 54 points per game that feels like it doesn't bode well when Finley's giving up 39 a game Finley struggles when they can't score those points Mike Rob how do you see this thing rolling out well you know what <laughs> If I was a betting man, I wouldn't bet against Finley right now. You know, yeah. this team is hot. They're on a streak, and they're on a roll. You know, um, when you got confidence and momentum, it's a lot of things that, that can slow you down. It's kind of like the Anthony Wayne girls. This is a team that can beat themselves. You know that this Perrysburg team is going to come out here and play a nice zone defense and force Finley to go ahead and shoot shots from the outside. That's what they want them to do. But do you really want that? You know, and that's what – Perrysburg is going to try to challenge this team with. So I'm excited to see if Finley could continue to keep this streak going um, with the target on their back. They've done it really well all season long. But for Perrysburg, this is an opportunity for them to be able to protect their gym 
step up and show the rest of the league, you know, that, hey, we're not done yet. We can still get out here and compete at a high level. But it's it's going to take a lot to be able to knock a team like Finley off. And you the Hive is going to be rocking. Yes. You mentioned the defend their home court. Yeah. So Perrysburg is definitely going to bring it. They have 10 wins already yep. this season. Their uh, RPI, this is one and four as you take a look at the latest standings. <laughs> Finley, number one. Perrysburg, number four. So this is legit. Both have legit opponents. The three losses for Perrysburg were against Southview, Whitmer, and Central Catholic. Three quality opponents. And the other element of this one, Mike Rob, I like is Jim Rookie, 25 years at Finley. Dave Boyce, yeah. 22 years at Perrysburg. So there's not going to be a stone unturned Next. in this matchup. They are going to be well prepared, game plan to a T, and it's going to be a matter of executing that game plan on Friday night uh, live on the BCSN app. And then the other element that I would bring up in, in with Finley, they're undefeated, they're ranked in the top five in the state, and they're continuing to challenge themselves not only in the NLL Buckeye division, but still ahead for win uh, for Finley after this game against Perrysburg. Whitmer on February 9th, potentially the game, game of the season. Right. We saw the first matchup, Finley at Whitmer. Finley dominated Whitmer, so Whitmer's going to want some revenge. Finley also takes on Shelby, Tiffin Columbian, and then Perrysburg again on February 23rd. That game would be at Finley. So regardless, both of these teams do a solid job of going outside of conference to schedule games that are going to play a factor for them that they can hearken back to when they are in tournament play in February and potentially into March. And we've got plenty of star power. If you look at, check out the blade, check out the leading scorers in the NLL in their articles. And we've got a lot of those guys in this matchup, Javante Hill and Will Cardon. You're both between 18 and 19 points per game for Finley. You've got Austin Schultz sitting at 20 ish points per game. So we've got scoring a plenty from those guys, but you mentioned they could really vault themselves into Perrysburg could really good standing in the NLL. And if you're a Whitmer fan, you are rooting for Perrysburg this Friday because that sets up you in your rematch with Finley to be able to take sole possession of the lead of the NLL. This puts all three of those teams at one loss if Perrysburg can pull this upset at home. And that makes that game of the year we just talked about even bigger if Perrysburg can pull this upset off. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and um, and we know that you like Whitmer. You you want that I don't know to what happen? You're talking about, <laughs> but no, and you're right though. You know, it would be fun to see Perrysburg get this upset because it would bring it all the way back to seeing that Whitmer versus Finley matchup and seeing you know if this is going to be that game that we want. We're still going to get the game we want, but I think those two teams are going to have to eventually square off um, later in the season in the playoffs. But right now for the NLL title. That would be a very fun thing to see is a, a lot more parity here going down in the stretch. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, this is going to be a huge game between, you know, Finley Whitmer when they match up later. But if you're a Whitmer fan, you want not to be able to tie in the league right with a win because you split them. You want them to have one more loss than you, right? You want to take that league championship, right? And not just do we have one great game. We've got a whole slate of great games let me see that graphic of our games coming up this week. Justin, Ooh. what's up there? Yeah, that's a juicy one right at the top. We talked about it on, live on the NLL Network and all of these games always on the BCSN app. You can subscribe, download it, BCSN Now, BCSN Plus app. Uh, we got St. Francis hosting Detroit Jesuit. We saw uh, Northview and Anthony Wayne as well this coming Friday. Ottawa Hills at Toledo Christian. We'll see if Coach John Lindsay and the boys can pull an upset on the road against TC. Fremont Ross at Bowling Green. I tell you what, I like what I've seen out of Bowling Green. And they've battled teams not only in the Cardinal, but also in the Buckeye division. Uh, they've taken on Anthony Wayne in tight, close games. I, I do like what Bowling Green's done this season. Maumee at Rossford, the two BCSN footprint area teams in the Northern Buckeye Conference. Reminder, Maumee in the NBC for the first time this year. It went very, very well during the football season. And now they're doing very similarly, not only in basketball on the boys' side, but also the girls' side. Uh, Lucy Porter, a star player for Maumee, doing well on the girls' side. Then high school hockey for you on the ice, BG and St. John's, an 8 o'clock puck drop there. All those games on the BCSN Plus app. And uh, just give a shout-out. We talked about Rossford a little bit last week on the show just because they are so young and their stars are freshmen. I'm excited for to see Maumee go into Rossford, that brand-new, obviously beautiful gym. See those freshmen continue to shine from on me, but we'll give some love. And remember, we're also going to have some little bit of a, a little bit of a Napoleon on the on the game day nation on Friday because they are our student section of the week. Make sure you guys get yourself your SSOTW stuff onto our socials, 
And that's basically going to do it for us this week. Oh, I got one thing. Oh, Kimmy. Oh, win alert. Hey, win watch alert. out. Watch out for the way Indians versus Jones Academy. They could break the streak oh. that they lost of finally getting a victory. We'll see. On the boys' side. Yes, the boys. Yeah, and they also play Springfield as well. They so, played yeah. them last night. They did not come up victorious. Springfield got them. Yeah. Got it. Got it. All right, we got Mike Stradamus making a prediction. Make sure you catch us right here Wednesday, the 31st at 4 p.m. on BCSN. Listen to the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, or bcsnnation.com slash podcast. See you.